So I just got done watching Aftermath, and is it just me that has a sudden need to go buy trans metal toys? Also known as the closest Beast Wars got to a toy commercial episode, this deals with the aftermath of the alien construct being destroyed, the loss of Optimus Primal, and the quantum surge that changed the Beast Wars forever. I'm joking, but it really is true. A lot of this episode is dedicated to showing off what a trans metal is and what they can do. There is a lot of focus on Rat Trap, Cheetor, and Megatron, and not necessarily in a character sense, even in a fight scene sense. It is mostly just to show off, hey look, all these toys can now do these things. Go pick them up at your local store, available now from $9.99 to $14.99 MSRP, while supplies last, limits, you know, limits and conditions apply. What? Yeah, no, no. This episode is very much about highlighting exactly what has changed uh, with the cast thanks to the trans metal upgrade. It's a little bit overbearing, especially in the wake of losing Primal, the 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 uh, the, uh, the uh, stasis pods. Wow, brain blank. The stasis pods falling, which by the way, in this episode, nobody mentions. Nobody mentions that, like, every stasis pod fell out of orbit. There's a lot to unpack in this episode, but again, like, keep that in mind. Everything everything that we go over here is uh, kind of thinned by that. Uh, the first thing that caught my eye in this whole episode is the fact that even the computer sounded sad about Optimus Primal's destruction. Uh, and this is not unheard of. Teletran 1 in some episodes of G1 did show like an actual personality did they program the computer to sound uh with empathy when someone dies when it reports somebody's like signal is lost like the pro <laughs> it was it's bizarre it's a it's a bizarre choice because you wouldn't expect the computer to care uh small little small little thing i thought it was funny this is the first sign of Tarantulas living in Black Arachnia's head for a time. He is physically able to make her speak, which we saw just a little bit of at the end of season one. But she, he's also able to make her move and influence her greatly. And even though she's threatening to self-destruct, she's threatening to like end this the way you know any way she can. Tarantulas is still able to put enough control into her. It's an interesting way of starting to demonstrate Black Arachnia's genuine motives here. Black Arachnia, above all else, is a character about freedom. She does not want to be told who she has to be or what she is. She does not want anyone over her that can order her around. Her pursuits for power seem to be so that no one else can threaten her. Also, her aspirations for Predacon leadership as well. As a character, freedom seems to be her defining trait. And this is the first time we get to see her freedom truly threatened with Tarantulas in her head. And we're going to see what extent she's willing to go toward in order to get that freedom back. But that's not for now. For now, she just has a decent enough showing. Tr uh, talking her way out of getting scrapped by Megatron, probably the, her best moment in, uh, for the episode. Because it is a really clever observation she makes. So, the big thing in this episode is the transwarp explosion does not affect anyone besides the original cast of characters. If they were if they were born on Earth, they were completely immune to the effects. We saw that with Tigatron and Air Razor, and they never really explained this. Best guess, we know that the quantum surge travels through time as well as through space. That's how uh, Ravage and the Predacon Alliance found where uh, Megatron was. In this case, the only thing they would have in common is time travel aspect, which would mean it was only the characters who traveled in time to the beast to the to prehistoric Earth that would be affected because they have that same like time displacement that the quantum surge did. Best guess, best guess. So essentially what happened with transmetallizing them is that it super evolved them. You know, like Digimon. 
They gain about as many weapons as a Digimon does when it evolves. Uh, this is also the episode where Waspinator was supposed to die. When he fell into the lava in this episode, he was conveniently saved by a uh, CR tank. But Tarantulas and Pterosaur, not as lucky. If it hadn't been for how popular Waspinator was, it would have been, tarant- it would have been a Pterosaur that was spared. Uh, instead, only Megatron on aboard the dark side was affected by the Quantum Surge, which is a bit of a missed opportunity, but, you know, we're still working with mainframe, limited budgets and all that. And I don't think I would want Waspinator powered up. That takes away some of his fun. See, um, there's a little bit a little bit of weirdness. We go back to the Maximal base and somehow, uh, through all through the uh the planet buster activating, primal blowing up, the quantum surge, somehow they found time to lock up Inferno and Tarantulas' bodies. Just just to say. Weird. Um the fight scene in this one is weird. Like a lot of this. Because Megatron only knows that Primal was destroyed, but he brings just himself and Waspinator along for the ride. He's basically going in, like, with only himself and Waspinator. Of all of his troops, we were going with the potentially the most incompetent one in order to storm the Maximal base while it's still weak uh, and still mourning the loss of Primal. But even, like, basic math should have told Megatron he's vastly outnumbered here. And that's just assuming that the auto defenses aren't on. It seems like a really forced way of putting Megatron into the episode and putting some conflict into it to show off the transmetal abilities. Otherwise, tactically, this goes against everything Megatron was tactically for the last few episodes. This just seems like a foolish move. So that it's un, it's unfortunate. It's, it's like, I can't look at that choice and go, yeah, that's what Megatron would do. No. It just feels like they wanted to show off the transmetals and have have them fight. So that's what we got. Uh, so there's a scene in here I do like where there there's a very brief squabble over who is leader uh, after this. Uh, not really a squabble. They actually seem to remember Chain of Command because Rat Trap is the one that gives the initial commands. And then when Dinobot comes out of the CR chamber and he's going to, with Primal gone, I should be, and immediately gets goozled by Rhinox. Gets grabbed by the throat and picked up off his toes. It's a great spot. And it's the last time Dinobot tries to make a play for leadership. Uh, he's done. I mean, as soon, as soon as Rhinox gets ready to choke slam you down to the ground, I think, yeah, you're pretty much done. So, the fun part about this episode is we, we do recall that the season ender for Beast Wars is actually three parts, but this picks up immediately where they left off, and the cliffhanger plays into the next two-parter, which means we technically have a six-episode story arc going here, and we're at the midway point. And being at the midway point, it's not really surprising that this episode is kind of a lull. I would call it passable. I can't call it skippable because it is a very plot-critical and vital episode. But really, it does feel very forced that they are putting all these transmetal characters in uh, and showing them off specifically. Megatron's making mistakes. Uh, there's a, a few weirdness, uh, weirdness in the uh, continuity here. And it does just seem to be for the sake of showing off toys. And, like, that's probably as close to Beast Wars ever came to being a Saturday morning commercial. So, those are the thoughts on Aftermath. Coming up, uh, we are going to be talking some Fusors. And, again, I'll probably be doing that uh, both episodes the same day. So, you won't have to wait for the full opinion. So, thank you guys for watching another one. And I will see you for the next episode. Guys, I am facing the most powerful enemy any YouTuber can face, the algorithm, and I need your help to defeat him. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Every time you do, we attack that algorithm and we drive it back until it can no longer defeat this channel. Thank you very much.